Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Planet Zoo. We are back in Arcadia for another episode where we're going to be developing some habitats for animals that we've already seen in this zoo before. <laughs> oh, that red deer just wants to be uh, famous for a few seconds, so we'll just let them carry that around and then we'll get on with our build. So today we are making a brand new habitat for our Shawalski's horses and I was originally going to add llamas into the mix as well very much like I'd done in the Saltwell Safari Park build that I did a while back. Unfortunately having looked into it the uh, two animals are not compatible based on the fact that the foliage and stuff that they require just does not match up at all and we'd be left with essentially tick seed all the way around the habitat and because it's a large habitat i didn't want that to be the case so we've replaced the llamas with indian peafowl which should give me a really nice income of conservation points it'll just be like a drip feed because they breed like mad and they <laughs> breed a lot <laughs> um, so without further ado let's wave goodbye to the red deer habitat that we've built last week and kick off our speed build. So I wanted to start pretty simple with a structure you can already see what we've kind of been going for here once again using steel girders and plaster to set up our framework for this build. Now I did want to start mixing in some modern touches so I'm playing around with some of the Australia wood pieces here uh, mainly the panels to create a nice kind of transition between this classical architecture that we have and brand new architecture so going with the idea that this is a brand new building that has been added to the development and it is made in a more modern style I had a little bit of a trouble with uh, getting these right so i decided to make the uh, wood pieces just work on the corners and then it was just a case of matching them all up and getting them fit nicely now things are going to look a little bit different, this is going to have a totally new backstage area and everything but we're just going to jump through these first initial stages of the build where I'm working out what pieces I'm going to use and stuff. Obviously this is one of the detrimental things about my build style because I don't really plan anything out, I just do it on the fly and we see how things go. So once we'd got our basic structure put in place I wanted to start marking out my staff areas so we're once again using some of these European banner kind of posts that are made of metal to create a cage like structure that we're then going to fortify with some mesh again having a little bit of trouble with my selection tools this week but we're okay it's fine <laughs> nothing's going disastrously wrong yet and then putting in some panes of glass for the guests to be able to look into these backstage areas and see what's going on here we are coming in with our mesh now just to uh, really finish this off and reinforce it and make sure nothing can get through those structures and uh, yeah it was just a, a simple case of lining up the pillars and stuff so things fit in nicely these pillars are eventually going to be removed and replaced with some more plaster i used some of the uh, pieces from the north africa pack to create some customized plaster pillars because they were the only thing that seemed to fit Anyway, coming back in with some metal beams with some connecting posts just to finish off the framework for our mesh and our post structure to highlight our backstage area. And these eventually form an A-frame to support the roof. Now I've not shown that at all in the build because it was a bit of a nightmare to be quite honest and there was a lot of up and, and down and with a camera it wasn't a great thing to look at so I thought we'd cut that out of the video altogether but you will get a little bit of flavour for what it looks like on the internal shots at the end of the video. But this was just how I wanted to design this uh, backstage area and the place where the animals are going to sleep. I then replaced the internal plaster with more Australia wood panels because they just uh, it looked a little bit flat and boring with just all plaster everywhere and then when we put in these Australia wood panels everything looked a little bit more vibrant and colourful and it just really helped because I want mostly the inside of this to be soil and rock textures and obviously we're going to put a floor in the staff bit of the habitat itself but we're not going to be putting a proper flooring in for our horses and the peafowl it just doesn't make a lot of sense to have that in there considering it's basically just landmass that we don't actually need to put flooring on it's only the animals that are going to be using it and i'm pretty sure they'd much prefer to be sleeping on soft ground with them bedding on as opposed to rocks <laughs> so yeah we made those adjustments also i ended up moving the entrance which you will see very soon Next up we're going to put in some props and stuff just to decorate our back area here. We're going to put in some of these Australia wood signposts that we're then going to attach some of the hooks to. 
and that'll look nice and it'll just be a place for us to hang our tools and stuff so that we then threw down a load of stuff here and then I did realize very shortly after starting to record the uh, voiceover for this that I have put one of those shovels in just on the weirdest angle you could imagine so I will sort that out eventually coming in with some boxes and storage crates and stuff and I can't believe I still didn't notice the uh, skew whiff shovel there when I was coloring the uh, tools and stuff in never mind uh, I have noticed it now and it has been sorted we came in with some buckets and stuff and extra bits and pieces just to add a little bit more detail to this back area here and uh, one of the other things that we've had to be very careful of in this build is the peafowl and the Shawalski's horses they will only be happy with up to around about 28 to 30 percent coverage when it comes to greenery and stuff so we've had to be a little bit of uh, like creative with the uh, scenes that we create in the actual habitat itself but we're not there yet we are continuing to add some props and stuff to this part of the building and eventually I put in a floor uh, after realizing that it, this doesn't look very good as just a flat soil surface so moving a few more things around I wanted to put in this uh, big watering uh, like I think it's a shrine but I quite like it as a, a place where water would just be poured into and then you can just fill a bucket up as a staff member and then distribute it wherever you see fit but I really like the idea of adding in some sacks and stuff, grain sacks and things like that, and then just like a few more tools and a couple of other sacks and crates just to really finish it off. I could have filled these with fruit, but I thought that would be a bit of a silly thing to do, considering this is essentially just a backstage area. The fruit and things I really would like to just save for stalls and things like that. Then we put in our stone floor and I could have used the flat roof textures here but I would have then had to have moved everything up a touch so just using the panels and getting them as close to the floor as possible was the best course of action for this part of the build. This is where we start to consider whether it's worth changing where our doorway is for the build itself. Uh, I played around a little bit over here with the where I was going to put the actual entrance and the idea originally was the staff would enter from the actual outside of the building. They'd come through this staff area and be able to access the habitat there. Unfortunately, I was a little bit concerned that I would run into the same mistakes I made in the red deer habitat where I created a staff entrance area that they couldn't access or I would make it too big and the peafowl would be able to run through into this staff area which I don't want to happen at all I want that to be completely closed off so we moved the doorway and now our staff will be able to walk through the backstage area and enter the habitat properly once they get through that door and it just means I can cut it off completely from the animals and it, it just looks fantastic and I then don't need to create a custom door because the habitat gate fits in really nicely and we just create a lovely framework here using mesh panels and once again those metal beams from the base game and I think this is looking really good already now obviously we're spending a lot of time on the interior design of the backstage area and stuff like that and that's because with the Shawalski's horse and the peafowl only having a small footprint in terms of how much foliage they require, there's not a lot of exterior stuff we're going to be doing today. Lots of little scenes and stuff and a little bit of rock work as well as designing the pond that's at the back of this habitat. But in general, we can't actually fill this place out too much, otherwise the animals will start to feel the effects. Now, I do know that you can put them all in and it doesn't really affect the animals, but guests do look at them and they do seem to be the fountain of all knowledge when it comes to uh, how much foliage an animal requires in its habitat and they will be disappointed and uh, their happiness will be affected if they happen to see animals that they know <laughs> have too much foliage in their habitat and that can lead to refunds and we already have a few refunds stacking up at the moment and I will be talking a little bit about that in another episode and how we're going to actually solve that. Coming in again with our like ironwork to give the nice framework to the actual build. I then did a little bit of a te terrain painting here, just uh, reset it all to a uh, short grass and then came in with some soil, some hard soil and then a little bit of rock texture. And this was something that happened continually through the build. We also, now that I've moved the entrance, we extend the size of the habitat. You could see that little dip in the original barrier there. That's gonna then back out right onto the guest pathway. 
Then on these parts of the windows, rather than putting glass in, I just wanted to continue that mesh work all the way around, but we're doing it a little bit less detailed and not putting any iron bars in because we don't actually need them. Now it's time for our fence. And here I experimented a little bit, but I ended up settling on these conservation wooden panels to be the main base of it. We then sunk in a generic Planet Zoo fence, or it might be a New World fence. I think it's a New World fence. And then used some Arctic wood posts to finish off the edging of it. So we're just going to run this all the way around the habitat and then we will eventually get to the water part of it and we're going to leave a little bit of a gap because we're going to design something a little bit different for that bit that goes over the pond and the little stream that runs right into that central body of water around Old Town. So this just continued all the way along and I don't show it but we do modify these a little bit to create some with some glass panes in and some that are going to act as our habitat information board mounts basically. And as you can see coming all the way around the other side we just match this all up so we've got a nice straight line in between the two pieces here and we can then finish off the rest of this fence work. So once again, I just rotated the final piece here and then deleted the next part of the fence, then moved that post into position. So it's got a little bit of a strange angle, but it doesn't look too much of like a problem once we finish off our work over here where the little stream is. And once again, we're just using these basic iron bars from the base game pack because I think they're just versatile pieces. I've said this before, I, I do repeat using a lot of uh, pieces to build with, but I just think it it makes sense. I really like using the like very out there pieces for statements basically everything else in my basic construction arsenal is just the basic tools and i just think that's that's just something that works for me obviously it's going to work different for everybody but for me using these pieces it's just what i'm comfortable with and i i know where i'm going to put them and how i'm going to use them so while i do like to go out of my comfort zone every now and then i will always fall back on the same stock pieces from time to time Obviously we have that little bit of an issue with the pillar just floating in midair, so we just came in with a big rock and popped that down. Now I'm going to do something very new for my Shawalski's horses because they've got so much space. I wanted to create some little show jumping um, jumps for them. I don't know if they're going to use them, but it would be really cool if they did. And uh, I'm really excited to kind of just watch this for a little bit and see how they interact with them if they actually jump over them because obviously we know that they can jump over the fences if they're not tall enough and they can escape will they interact with things that are jumpable in game like in the actual habitat itself so i've seen them jump over like onto rocks and stuff and that just gave me the idea to make these little jumps for them and I just think it would be really cool. So we finished this off. This was really simple. It was just using the conservation wooden posts and then the moorings from the European pack. And that was that. We recolored them. We put them all into place. And then we made three duplicates of them. Well, two duplicates of them. A red, a green, and a yellow. Then I wanted to put a little bit of privacy in on this side by the air train station. Air train track, sorry. And that was mainly because... Obviously, you see motorways in the UK and all over the world are often lined with trees. And that's to eliminate the noise of a motorway if there's a residential area nearby. And I wanted to eliminate the noise of my train when my animals are nearby because I don't want them to get spooked by a train just circling around. But I also would really like guests to have nice views from the train so that they can see into a habitat as they're going past on the train. And they can just about see through the fence as they're coming round, which I think is a really nice touch. Over here, you can obviously see we have a little bit of a gap where our fence meets up with the rest of the building. And this next portion of the build is just going to be me messing around with rocks to create a nice big formation. So we took away a few of the fence posts there and just made a nice big rock formation, which we then duplicate and put throughout the habitat on different rotations, angles and merging a few different uh, formations together. I think it looks really cool. It's a nice way to finish off and just give a nice uh, end to this fence work. And I really like playing around with the rocks in this game. I think it's just such a nice thing to do. <laughs> uh, I know a lot of people struggle with it, 
but it's really simple once you get the hang of it and once you kind of develop your own system. It doesn't take a lot of tweaking and you can just move stuff around at your leisure until you get the effect that you're looking for. Most of the rocks fit together really nicely and I have a lot of fun just playing around with them and seeing what works. And as long as it doesn't look too much of a obvious uh, thing that you have like two rocks just stacked on top of each other you can come up with some really nice creations but always remember to color your terrain around the base of the rock there's nothing worse than doing a lot of work on a couple of like really nice statement pieces in your build and then having it just go into green grass that is long and poking through the bottom of it make it soil or make it earthy rock and stuff and then just stick a couple of plants sticking out of the bottom of it and it'll look so much better and then you can blend that in to grass. We came in with hawthorn bushes and drin grass, nettles and a few other bits and pieces. This is different obviously from the traditional European stuff that I've been doing in the rest of the zoo so we're not using brambles or bracken and stuff because they're not native to where our Shawalski's horse would be traditionally from and as you can see here we're duplicating the rock pieces just taking a few bits out and then creating a brand new rock formation from the original piece that we did. And this is really nice to do because it saves a lot of time and you can really make one rock formation go quite far once you finish designing the initial one. And that's what I really like about it. So the next step was to put some trees in and we're then going to make some little scenes on these trees to really finish this off and give it a nice statement piece or four or five statement pieces and little montages within the habitat so that it doesn't look like a boring flat piece of ground. Now I came in with these cattail reeds and they look cool but they do end up getting changed which you will see later on when we come in to really finish off this pond. I still think there's a couple of bits and pieces we could improve with this one but I'm really happy with how this turned out. This is one of my favourite builds. I absolutely love those show jumping posts that we've put down. I think that's a really cool little touch. Obviously, Schwalski's horses can't be tamed, so you wouldn't actually see any of them running in the Grand National or anything, or the Kentucky Derby, but uh, like, I just thought it was a cool little touch. And if they use them, that would be so cool. And uh, I'm going to spend a lot of time waiting to make this thumbnail because I will be waiting to catch the Schwalski's horses jumping over those posts, if, if at all they do it. Anyway, I wanted to play around with some terrain again, so we raised it a little bit here to create this little hill with a nice rock formation once again on there, and then came back in with some terrain painting just to really flesh this out. As we come around here and put in some more hawthorn bushes and finish off this little hilly area, we are starting to hit our peak for the 25 to 30 percent limit for the foliage coverage for our animals in this habitat so we're going to need to make the most of our terrain brushes while we are painting around and putting in these little bits of foliage i used a lot of common salt water in this build as well because they're really nice the textures are lovely and they wrap really well around rocks as well as the hawthorn bushes and what i really like is that you have two different types of the salt water you've got the dried out versions and the lush green versions and you can merge them together to get some really nice effects of bits of this salt water that have dried out and things like that which i think is really cool i put in a couple of little steps going up to here just in case the horses are able to climb up there and access that grab ball at the top of the hill and then we were just finishing off some foliage around the bases of all of our trees so in general this has been a really nice build uh, there you can see us using some goldenrod and more drin grass and i think that's uh, dogwood rose bushes there as well so very limited again on our foliage because i only like to use a few small pieces of foliage just some little flowers to add some pops of color but it's mainly grass and bushes and stuff because th that's how you get the most out of your builds i think little flashes of color throughout you can see here coming in with some oxide daisies and i think we also used pin cushion flowers as well just to finish this one off because again limit your foliage don't use too much or too many different like, types of foliage it, it ruins a build having some simple basic colors and stuff in there with little like flashes of flowering plants and things that's the most effective way to go because that really draws the eye and that's what you want to do with your builds especially larger builds where you have uh, limitations like what we have with our animals within this build it it gets very difficult and you really have to manage the foliage that you use within the habitats to to really get it right 
So just be prepared to sacrifice having super colourful places in your habitats because you can do that with things like what we've done with the horse jumps there. They're really colourful, they're really bright and vibrant and really stand out. So we go with that and then we have some pretty basic flowering plants in there just poking through some grass and uh, bushes and stuff. Now we're going to just put a nice layer of rock work all the way around this pond. I think the animals can still access it once this is all done. The peafowl, I'm not sure if they can actually, so I may need to look into that in a little bit of a management that I do outside of the build. But it was just a case of now finally moving around these reeds and finishing everything off. I was really pleased with this one and before we start our speed build again I just want to thank you for tuning in this week. It's been a, a whistle stop tour this episode um, but I think it's been a really good one and I'm hoping that I've shown you enough of the build to communicate how I was going about it and stuff and uh, if I have rambled a little bit this week I do apologize but we are into our showcase now and here you can see our Shawalski's horses just basking in the sunlight as our new peafowl come in. We have uh, a couple of albino peafowl here and they've already started breeding so that one's uh, really good. <laughs> um, it's going to bring me in quite a few conservation points because I'm going to need them. Uh, we don't have multiple habitats for the Schwalski's horses so I'm going to be looking to bring in more studs as my current studs get older or become infertile so that's something that i'm gonna to have to watch out for there's a lot more now that we're getting more animals and stuff in here there's so much more micromanagement to do within the zoo so it's getting a little bit more difficult than it was when we first started out anyway i'm going to shut up now and leave you to enjoy the little showcase that we've got for you here i hope you enjoyed this episode thank you all so much for watching if you are new here please consider subscribing if you've managed this long surely you'll be able to put up with a few more videos from me <laughs> Thanks for watching guys and I will see you next time. Bye bye.